it's it's basically your adaptability amplified by the manipulation and the manipulation tactics that toxic narcissistic people use and it's a defense mechanism in order to keep yourself safe protected basically you're going with the flow in a narcissistic in a relationship with a narcissistic person especially when it's a parent um, you can see how if you don't go with the flow then you're odd man out and you become more of a scapegoat than you probably already are, right? So it, it's a learned behavior. But because it's a learned behavior and it's patterning and you're not a narcissist and you have empathy because likely you do things when you're triggered, if you have, if you recognize fleas, you do things that are um, make you feel guilty or ashamed or you feel bad for the person that you did it to or you think, oh my gosh, why did I react like that? And likely that your your empathy toward the person that you uh, basically had fleas at, <laughs> you know, that you uh, you feel something, right? And so that means you can fix it. Some examples might be someone is triggered and the survivor who was triggered might lash out at the person who triggered them. The person innocently did something perhaps that was a trigger. It wasn't something that exposes you back to a behavior that you needed to protect yourself from. And you, uh, the survivor might instantly have a temper or a rage or an attack upon the other person without any, um, without any discussion or room for that person to have even made a mistake by saying something or even to say something that needs to be said that you don't want to hear, right? Does that make sense? And so those kind of triggers can cause a flea-like reaction. And basically you, the survivor in that case will project and gaslight back onto the person who said it. Another thing might be feeling like you get your feelings hurt, being triggered by having your feelings hurt and instantly um, shutting down and going silent instead of saying something, or you might, you know, you, you basically you're throwing back narcissistic manipulation tactics at other people when you're triggered. And so recognizing that what your triggers are is a huge step in understanding how to cope with, deal with, and then functionally uh, relearn how to behave instead of the manipulative way you have been taught to behave, which is a flea. Does that make sense? So we recognize the traits that you display, which could be fleas. I mean, there could be a lot of ways, but anything that you feel like you are doing in reaction that is totally mechanical almost always, it's like, it feels like programming. It feels like a program response and a, a lashing out, can't control yourself kind of feeling. Anything that you're doing in that regard, you're not doing with intention. So it's, probably something you want to look at anyway, whether it's a flea or not. And and then once you have recognized it, I think that you can take that, break that down and see where it served you in the past and see how it got kept you safe. See how that having that reaction was a trained reaction and not your own actual response. Seeing that that reaction um, is something that protected you perhaps or something that made you fit in and blend in with a toxic family, perhaps. Or sometimes we do these things because they're argument style, just from being around someone. Like if someone is always yelling, you might start yelling when you never yelled before, right? So recognizing where that served you in the past so that you can then switch it around and actually make a choice in how to behave through restating it, readjusting it, and finding a larger perspective around what is going on. Self-forgiveness here is key. Yeah, and I think it's interesting because this ties in with triggers a lot because obviously if you're triggered, for instance, let me give an example of speaking to a survivor and having to tell them something they didn't want to hear. They instantly made me the bad guy because I delivered them the news that they didn't want to hear, right? And in making me the bad guy, started projecting all kinds of stuff onto me that wasn't that I had nothing to do with. Okay, and they were treating me, what it did in me is it triggered my response to, first of all, wanting to gray rocket because I know better. And second of all, it if I let if I had let myself react, I would have gone into the argumentative defensive mode, which is what I do when I'm around someone who's gaslighting and projecting upon me, 
Okay. So in that case, I had to recognize both of our fleas and step back and, and realize that this person was in absolute reaction and they weren't actually talking to me. They were talking to their narcissist really, and they weren't going to let that happen again. And so it's self-protection for them to lash out, start blaming uh, accusations and everything over something that they didn't want to hear. And they could not step back and see perspective. And so if you recognize that kind of thing in yourself where you're lashing out at people or you're um, unable to see perspective, that happened to you most recently. Yeah. And and it's hard, especially when you have two survivors, if, if one of them minimally isn't able to step back and see what's happening, it can cause a lot of hurt feelings because you know the person isn't a narcissist, but here they are behaving like one. And then one or the other invariably calls the other one, <laughs> you know, so because what you're displaying is narcissistic manipulation behaviors, but but it's not just narcissists who gaslight and project, right? As we know, when it comes to triggers and when it comes to fleas, I think it's important to understand when you're talking about raising your emotional intelligence around that situation, to understand that you are only seeing a narrow perspective. When you're in that reactionary mode, you're in a very tight perspective. You're just boxed in, right? It's not, there's no room around the issue to actually see what's going on. You're hyper-focused and drawn way into the issue. And you're, what you're drawn into isn't actually the issue. You're drawn into your reaction to a trigger. And so understanding that is going on and allowing change so that you can raise and raise your emotional intelligence around that situation, I think is useful. And that takes some work, <laughs> right? But here's the thing. We have a thing happen. It, especially, I'm going to talk about between two people where you know there's empathy. This is not unrelated to a narcissist. Well, it's related to a narcissist only in that if that's what put the programming there. But when, say, you have something happen and you, you have a reaction, you're reacting you're reacting to your trigger, right? So you're not actually even reacting to the person. And so, and then that causes a chain reaction if you've got two survivors where then they start reacting and then it's just, there's no point to the conversation anymore because no one is, no one's in response. And learning to respond, it, to me, this is all about perspective. This is all about gaining and allowing a change that what you believed was true isn't everything. It is so hard when we've been programmed to believe that these horrible things are true because they've been proven over and over and over again, right? So yeah, okay. You learn better ways to react instead of, re or to respond rather than to react. Oh, what I was gonna say is when you're in reaction, your emotions are the loudest thing, okay? Your logic goes under, it's like, if it was a wave, your logic is just surfing on that wave and it dives under when the emotions crash over you, right? So when those emotions are really high from a trigger, that's the time to recognize you're in a trigger so that you can seek the logic, I think. Seek the logic behind what's actually happening so that you can gain some perspective or learn some learn some body calming skills to calm your body down because the emotions are going to be screaming at you to react and it's it's instantaneous. It's not like you have a second in, in there to think about what you think about what you're feeling. You're just it just rises up. It's a body and emotional reaction, and all thought starts following that trail instead of having independent thought of your own, which is what allows you to respond. The best way to begin working on eliminating the fleas that you might have is to not have the toxic influences around you continually reinforcing the behaviors that you have. It's very difficult when still with a narcissist or having them around, it's not impossible, but difficult. You may have to resort to the flea-like behavior around the narcissist, but then work to not have it around other people. Tricky, right? But um, the best way I can think of if you have to still be around someone that is toxic is gray rock. Gray rock and really learn how, but only do it around that person. Okay, don't gray rock the whole world and shut down and shrink, right? Because <laughs> that doesn't help you. Um, but gray rock the narcissist so that you're not in reaction and you're not having your typical responses or your typical reactions rather that um, are creating the patterns for these fleas. A lot of times, 
say something happened. Like, let me go back to my example. This woman that didn't like what I said, didn't like what I had to say that was needing to be said because I had to say it. <laughs> it wasn't that I had an opinion of her. It actually was something that she, someone had to tell her this and it was me that had to do it. Okay. And it was instead of having a reaction of attack, let's flip it around. Let me pretend I'm the one who did it because I don't know how to speak about someone else's what they should and shouldn't do. What I would <laughs> what I would encourage in myself, if I felt the need to attack back because I did not like what someone was saying, the first thing I would do personally is try is listen to my language. What am I saying before I say it? Take a second to think about what I'm saying, just a second. And sometimes when you want to say something that's a lashing out response, you can shift the words to be more fair and um, thoughtful. And just in that, you are sort of softening the flea effect. Does that make sense? So it's learning how to speak to be able to still, because she may have had a legitimate reason for whatever it was, right? Or I may, if I, it was me, I may have a legitimate reason, but I can't get my point across if I'm reacting with a flea-like response, right? I cannot be heard. All it does is create more friction and tension in your life. So if you have not hit subscribe and you enjoy these, hit subscribe. If you've not hit the like button, hit the like button. You guys take care and I'll see ya. Bye-bye.